Hello everybody and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around Fantasy Premier League. My name's Serge. And my name is James. But People's Poll Day is one day that doesn't always revolve around Fantasy Premier League. Quite often we have football topics. We talk about the why the game. We are fans at the end of the day, James. And today is one of those. Uh, do you want to give them a rundown of what the options were, who lost and who won? This might just end up in a big ass fucking rant because I feel like the fan in me could come out quite strongly here. I, I agree. That's good. I'm, I'm I'm ready to kick back, relax, put my feet up. <laughs> People that know um, me should know that I love microwave popcorn, so I might even go pop a bag, come back, and uh, enjoy the show. <laughs> uh, uh, absolutely no apologies for this, but I'm really pleased that this is the option that won. So the three options were a brief look back on the final stages of the Champions League. How badly did Guardiola fuck it up against Leon? Did a bit of that on Patreon yesterday. Whammed in final, etc. The other option was Harry Maguire's Mr. Vino. What a guy goes on <laughs> holiday and gets arrested and was going to talk about the wider conversation of footballers responsibilities outside of the pitch essentially but uh, this option is one and it is the potential uh, well we say potential it's as it stands a mass premier league blackout in the uk where even season ticket holders as it stands will not be able to watch their side in many games this season unless they turn to piracy uh mass blackout is makes it seem like there's going to be no televised games that's not correct at all yeah so to, so to, to clarify the situation so what we had post lockdown because no one could get in was every single game televised basically uh and how did i felt it worked quite well i actually yeah. enjoyed the fact that all the games were on fine they were all at different times now, the midweek stuff was a bit mental, like 6 p.m., 8 p.m., three days in a row. It, yeah. it was a bit much. But we know that um, that that's not how this season's going to be scheduled anyway. We know what the, the schedule's like. But there's still the possibility and capability of showing all the televised games. But they're not. So the, the number of games that were due to be televised is exactly the same as it would be should we be allowed inside the stadium. Plus, they've added... Uh, chump change more is what I'd call it. There's a handful. I think they added 20 games in total. It's 20 games. It's part why we get over the over the season as well. Yes. Not even yes. like 20 games in the first uh, few months, whilst we know no one's getting in. There's 20 games over the whole season. It's the equivalent of like a couple of games a month. It's not. It's not moving the needle well, at all. It won't. You could look at it and say it's one game every two game weeks, for example. It's not even really a case of that. It's, it's actually more relating back to what we discussed a lot in detail yesterday of blank game week 18 and double game week 19 is coming about quite a bit because of splitting one set of midweek fixtures over two separate midweeks. So potentially the TV companies can show uh, 20 games, essentially, mm -hmm. or sorry, an extra five games or whatever there. They'll show all the mid... I imagine those midweek fixtures on both of those midweeks will all be televised live between Sky... BT and Amazon who have the, the rights for Premier League football. Also, what you have to remember is on the period that's gone, where we had all the games on television, the, the government made it mandatory that a certain amount of games were shown free to air. Correct. So the BBC obviously had four games. Amazon made all of their games free to air. Um, and I'm pretty sure they did anyway. And Sky had a handful of games that they put on pick as well. Uh, BT didn't make any of theirs available to free, to my knowledge. Now, yeah. there's, there's none of that's going to be happening. So if you don't have a subscription with Sky, BT, Amazon or whatever, you're you're already in the place. And we're not going to pretend any different, but a lot of guys already don't have subscriptions to these companies and do quite co comfortably watch Premier League football. The annoyance here is that for so many football fans in this country, they go home and away every single week, right? So the, the idea of football on a computer screen is already completely alien to them. Yeah, and, and when, when this topic was coming up, 
I very quickly knew your feelings towards this because obviously you are, you don't, you don't go home and away, but you watch your team at every possible opportunity. The only reason you don't go away is if it's really televised. But if it's a three o'clock on a Saturday, yeah. you're there, right? Yeah. So I can see it. You, you have to accept that you're in a, a minority of like 1%. Not even 1%. Very, very small minority. Because when I looked at it, I thought, okay, these games are not going to be televised. All right, fine. They're not going to be televised. But there's two sides to it. There's not being televised to everybody. And then there's the not being televised to season ticket holders. And um, I'm disappointed that I can't watch the games as a season ticket holder. You're right, actually. The, the more I think about it, I don't care about all the games. But I would like to watch the West Ham games. And if the West Ham games were televised, I'd watch them all. If you said to me now, you can watch all 38 Tottenham games, but you can't watch any other team, I'd go, yeah, thanks very much. Move mm-hmm. on with my life. Mm-hmm. That, that, that would be me personally. So the major issue right now, and it's worth saying that it's not impossible that this will get changed because there is serious pressure being put, in, being put on now by essentially just about every Premier League supporters group to say, like, this isn't on. What you got to remember is if you if you bring piracy into the conversation, right, and even think back into Newcastle United, right, it's 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 a big kind of underground deal at the moment about how people are watching games illegally. We know it's happening. Yeah. The majority the majority of us know how to get hold of the games, and if right. this doesn't change, I'll know how to get hold of the Tottenham games. It, it's not actually a case that I won't see the game. However. I would rather watch a game without the risk of fucking buffering and shit like that. I'd yeah, rather that, that, that watch is the game in better quality, etc. Personally, and I would pay the extra. You know, if if Tottenham charged a certain amount of money, I'd pay Tottenham the money because, uh, mm. to be honest, although a lot of football fans would feel differently at the moment, I'd go well. My football club needs a bit of income at the moment. I'll accept that if they're saying, "Well, here's the refund on your season ticket." Okay, it's 20, 20 quid for a Premier League game. I'll actually pay that. Yeah. Rather than yeah. try and stream the get game illegally on something that could go wrong, it probably won't. There's a few very reliable websites out there. But I'd, I'd just pay Tottenham the money and go, yep, yeah, I know this is going to be sustainable and reliable. It's legal. It's fine. Who knows? They might even give me a poxy fucking loyalty point for paying for it as well. <laughs> I don't know, right? So I would, I would rather go down that, that ways and means of pain yeah. to watch my yeah. team. I, yeah. I don't like the idea that Spurs might play Everton on the opening day at 3 p.m. on a Saturday, although it probably will be a televised game. And at 2.30 p.m., I might be sitting there thinking, which stream am I going to try today? I, that, that, that doesn't sit right with me personally. And I know I'm doing something, which I don't know if it... Is it wrong? Because what, I know a streaming? few webs... Yeah, I mean, is it wrong to... To, to actually, right, I know that website. I haven't got to click any forms or fill in any email addresses or anything like that to get a game quite comfortably. But generally, it's considered as you can't do that. But I'm going to do it. I'll tell anyone that right now that I'm going to do it. I'll be honest with you. Um, of You are in the minority of people that I know that have the full whack package of sports and all the rest of it. More and more people that I know now um, are going down the streaming route. Yeah. Um, uh, going down the streaming route, I, w- I went to visit um, a family member who will remain unnamed, who lives uh, just uh, in, in the Midlands. 120 quid for the year. For, that includes the box. 80 quid a year for the renewal uh, of the subscription. Every single sports channel in the world, or whatever it may be, right? Whatever they claim. And... On top of that, he gets all his kids' channels, movies, box sets, blah de blah de blah de blah. Eighty quid a year. I paid last season. I bought a legit um, streaming Now TV Sky Sports bundle for the season. I think they, at the start of the season, they do a season offer. I think hundred and maybe two hundred quid. I paid for the whole season for all the Sky Sports games, which was cool. But then BT Sports streaming is twenty five quid a month. I'm sure they have a deal for the end of the year or what have you. Even if you factor in your 50, I'd say 50, 60 quid a month is what people might pay for all the sports channels. Call it 600 quid a year. It doesn't compete. 600 quid versus 100 quid. Plus then you get all the other stuff included with these streaming boxes and stuff that exist anyway. But here's the thing, because I don't want to make it a comparison of finances because it's not just about that. I'm with you. I don't mind paying a premium for 
the club to give me the service and to know that the stream's not going to go down on me and I'm going to have random subtitles and all of that nonsense. I will, I will do it. Um, so I, I, I'm with you, but it's how much of a premium are you willing to pay? First, firstly, make it available. And second, I'd probably, if it, if it was, I'd probably pay 200 quid a year. I'd probably pay double. Um, if you think about it, people pay our Patreon and it's not crazy. It's not too dissimilar amount of money to something like that, right? For us to talk stuff they 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 pay it for the football. They really would. Um, I, I think there's going to be some interesting changes come out of this. And the likes of <clears throat> Amazon and what have you are so ready to stream more. Yeah. So ready to stream more. Um, the fact that there was four service providers in the game and post lockdown, B BBC, BT, Sky and Amazon, and it's only going to get bigger. What's important to say here is at the moment, we don't exactly know who's responsible for the lack of agreement. We, we do think it's possible. There are some people within government trying to push in the idea that you need to give access to, to fans, actually, at least until we've got people going back into football stadiums. Be that even if it is perhaps only for the first four game weeks. I'd suggest, as I keep saying, it will be a lot longer than that. But... What One of the issues is we think it's not so much the TV companies in this case because we kind of know from what happened after the restart that the TV companies will show all the games. Mm -hmm. The issue we think is coming from the Premier League clubs. The Daily Mail reported, and don't get me wrong, they're not the, the most reliable source, that Premier League clubs paid a 330 million rebate last season based on, obviously, the, the fact that the product was was somewhat different right one of one of the major selling points of the premier league is fans in the ground the atmosphere is very different to other leagues around the world etc so i mean if you break that down it's about 17 odd million per club right mm -hmm. the premier league clubs do not want to be paying this out again essentially now remember a 17 million per club over say 10 game weeks what happens if it becomes the whole season? Are we suddenly mm -hmm. talking 68 million per club, for example? Now, I, I don't suspect we'd get into that sort of problem. But there is a fear amongst Premier League clubs at the moment that should they go down the, the, their own, the, the same route of allowing Sky, etc. to show all the games, then this is going to happen again and it's going to cost them in the pocket. The problem is they're losing the relationship with their fans in the process. I think football fandom generally in terms of match day going fans is a, a real crossroad, which is part going back to what we've already discussed in the fact of it is actually quite easy to get hold of a Premier League football game that kicks off at, at 3 p.m. We'll come back to the ruling on that in a little bit. So there are more and more people looking at it and going, fuck me, do I really... Why am I paying £1,300 for a season ticket when I can see all the games anyway? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you take the example of Tottenham, 70 to 75% of the games will be shown live by an yep. official broadcaster anyway. The other 20, 25% yep. will show you can yep. pick up illegally. Plus, obviously, yep. what you've got happening with COVID, I think we're at a crossroads where a lot of people are thinking, well, I've lived without it now for four or five months. Can I continue to live without mm. it? The you, relationship... You the, the relationship is yeah. is getting further and further apart. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I do agree with you, but I also think there's a there's a, a percentage of fans that are craving to get back in. Um, the the real hardcore, exactly. I I, I miss. <laughs> I put my hand up. <laughs> I miss looking at the, the the view of the full pitch and that kind of thing. Um, you mentioned the thirteen hundred pound price tag on that's the season ticket price. I know mine's a lot cheaper, but we get inferior quality, so it's fine. But there isn't. A, <laughs> I'm not sure you do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. There is a. Uh, it's impossible for me to go to West Ham and not spend at least twenty or thirty quid because my parking's ten quid. My kid's gonna want something that costs five quid as a minimum, and I'll probably have a pint or something. Like that. Before you know it, twenty quid's gone, thirty quid's gone. Do that twenty times in a season, another five hundred quid on top of that. So it's a lot of money. If you really rack it up, we'll it is a lot of money. So I can understand that for people. And you're right, yeah, 100 quid a season, I can see all the games. There, there is a certain something about it. On the flip side, um, my uh, my cousin who's a Cintiq holder like you at your place, he's thinking the opposite. He, You know, you have something at your place called the Tunnel Club or something. 
stupid. Yeah, he wants to he wants to upgrade even more to get even more of an experience to be able to see the players oh, and whatever. Bloody whatever. hell, you think my season tickets expensive? <laughs> I, th- I think it's five figures, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. I, yeah. I think they were doing but, the first two seasons for ten grand or something like that. Unbelievable, mate. But yeah, yeah. The money aside, because if you can afford it, you can't. It's the it desire to be involved in the experience. When he's talking to me about it, he's talking about you can see the players and they can't see you through the tunnel and then you get to overlook where the dugouts are and whatever. He's really engaged with the experience. So I, I think you're right. It's an 80-20 where 80% are probably thinking, I don't need this anymore. But 20%, they, they want it back. They want it back. Um, I, I think I don't mind all of the games not being aired, but I do think that season ticket holders at clubs should be given an option to buy, get a streaming service to watch all of the games and charge if you want to or, or don't. Um, the renew, I don't, I don't know when the TV renewals come up, but this is now a situation where, say, the clubs have to give back a rebate to Sky Sports and what have you this season. The likes of Amazon can get involved in the bidding and the negotiations next time around and be like, you know what? We're cool. If if something like COVID happens again, don't worry about it. We won't ask for our money back because they'll be in a position where they don't need the money. Like Amazon are not going to be streaming football for the money because they're making money off everything else that they're selling you at the same time. Um, so it'll probably make the bidding process for, for television companies who want to get the rights to games much more competitive, much, much more competitive, which is a good thing, in my opinion. I mean, Amazon, I don't know. They probably spent all their money on uh, the the documentary that's coming out soon oh god that's monday you know <laughs> <laughs> i um, couldn't wait to mention it. i was like if you don't oh, if you're not watching any no. games james just whack on uh, all or nothing and you'll be good you'll be covered mate do you know how many podcasts i've got to edit next week while this thing starts oh my god <laughs> you've um, got an excuse to avoid it put it that way <laughs> what the podcast <laughs> yeah don't worry about it we'll, give... i'll be straight into tom and nick uh, tom and nick's dms <laughs> on who got the assist they did a they did a they did a series on um, some of them. They can just do the one on Spurs. You don't need to watch the Spurs documentary. Just listen to their pod wrapped up, right. pod done. But great. Um, so so interesting to see. I mean, yeah, I think the bidding process will become much more competitive um, because we've seen now the appetite amongst other service providers. The TV um, agreement, I think, runs out in 2022. So the current one, well, that, that's the point. So actually people go, oh, right, that's nearly two years away. I, actually, no, in terms of negotiating a new deal, in- that's going to be really, really soon, yeah. actually. So that's interesting. I went to read you a statement from uh, Katrina Law, who's the co-chairman of uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Supporters Trust, obviously keep a close eye on things that they're doing. One of the things she said is, watching your team is fundamental to being a fan. And we would hope that the Premier League clubs and broadcasters are moving heaven and earth to make sure that fans can still watch their team next season. All matches are broadcast live somewhere in the world. Um, uh, Added Law, who was part of a meeting between the top flight and representatives of the FSA on Wednesday when the issue was raised. So they basically all got together, all the supporters clubs last Wednesday got together and had a big discussion about how they're going to kind of fight this. We can't be in a situation where season ticket holders and members in this country prevented from attending games through no fault of their own are unable to watch their matches live in their homes. She believes, obviously, people are going to turn to illegal streams is what we said. The annoyance for myself is, and she says it in a later quote, Basically, I can go to anywhere in the world bar North Korea and Saudi Arabia, and actually, you will get it illegally in Saudi Arabia as well, where she can go and watch her team. She can't watch her team here. And it really angers me so much, and I know I've said this on a few people's poll podcasts and Tottenham's in the past before, that the idea that this is going on here in our country and I can jump on a Eurostar and go and live from France for a couple of months and know it won't be a problem to watch my team or go and get on a, on a flight to the other side of the world, to Australia, and watch my, my team, no problems, knowing I will see all 38 games. And that's not to say these people shouldn't have it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, so I, should we fu- should I'm saying <laughs> I should fucking have it as well. That's what I'm saying. It's absolutely absurd. There are two reasons why football cannot be shown at three o'clock in this country. The first is participation in sport, which I've argued for a number of years is completely fucking laughable because more people will play football in this country on a Saturday during the 12.30pm game than the Mm -hmm. 3pm game. Yeah, Sunday league. 
is what it's about, though, isn't it? Surely, like amateur football and people. Well, is if Sunday if, league, isn't it? Sunday mornings is about when people go down. But for for many people, perhaps more of like our age, it's not even about Saturday or Sunday, is it? We you know, right, can't say Champions League football because we're all playing five a side football down Power League on yeah. a Wednesday night, yeah. right? So that is ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It, the idea honestly, that it, it is. Like my, the weekends, anybody that's got young kids and whatever else, you know, like normally Saturday morning, Sunday mornings, you're doing stuff with the kids, come home, have lunch, and then chill out in the afternoon, which is the perfect time to stick the footy on. But but inevitably, if I'm doing stuff with the kids, it's, it's get out and get done in the morning, whether they're playing football or going out and about somewhere. It, up north, hundred yeah, percent. Up north in December, it's basically dark at three o'clock. So, so no, no, no. Seriously, so you're right. It's not a joke. No, no, no. No, no one's right. If they're playing football on a Saturday, they're playing it at twelve o'clock. They're playing it when the mm. fucking twelve thirty games on. It's absurd. The other reason, which I understand, and before anybody gets down my throat, listen, we've spoken a number of times how much we want to support the football pyramid, etc., is to protect attendances at uh, lower league football. Get that mm-hmm. completely right. Well, all the football league clubs are doing I follow. This isn't going to be a problem in the football league, by the way. It's already agreed. I follow. It's been there now. So if an Ipswich Town fan wants to watch Ipswich Town next season, he can go on and pay for it on the I follow service. It's also been agreed in Scotland. That season's obviously already started. Or through all the clubs, you can get the Scottish Premier League games, right? So the, the championship and League One, League Two, they're already doing that in terms of people not necessarily being at the stadium. That extra money you talk about through concessions, etc. They're already doing it themselves where, where fans can already sit at home and watch the games. And yet in the Premier League, you're genuinely telling me the only way I can watch Spurs potentially for a number of games for a sustained period this season is to do it by what mo- many people would call illegal means. I just cannot get my head around it. For me, we should be in a position now where every game that is not screened, and this is after COVID, every game that is not shown live at 3pm on a Saturday should be available via pay-per-view product. Whether that be £10, £20, £30, you might want to decide that by who the clubs are. But I think if it's a Premier League game, the same rate as what it would cost you for a night of boxing, for example, 20 quid or whatever it is, Sounds about right, in my opinion, to actually pay for it. And I can see you wincing, it's fine. Only because boxing, like these big pay-per-view fights, you might get three or four or five a year, whereas this is every other week. So yeah, okay. for, for me, if you just said a tenner, I'd have said I wouldn't have winced. But at 20, I'm like, oh, that's a little bit much. I've but said I, before, I wouldn't mm. wince at the price of an away ticket. I'll pay £30 for an away game. So if it's £30, sure. pound, I won't yeah. wince. I and think your, not, average, and, your average fan, uh, and I'll put myself more towards an average fan than a, than a hardcore, I'd pay tenner. And I think tenner's a, f- a fair price, I'll be honest with you. I'm also, by doing that, I ain't paying for the fucking travel, right? How much yeah, am true. I getting? If, if I end up paying the 30 quid in my living room, how much am I saving by not spending the, the train fares if I have to go somewhere ridiculous up north, for example? Mm. so I think like we should be in an age now listen if an Ipswich Town fan and I don't know why I've picked them I've just picked them wants to watch their club the fact that oh they could potentially pay for Tottenham versus Everton for 10, 20, 30 quid is not going to stop them paying to watch their own club the, the people just not understand that it's not like the average fan I don't know a Charlton fan is going to go well, should I watch Tottenham v Everton or watch Ipswich? Well, with respect, if they want to pick one, they're probably going to pick Tottenham and Everton. But if Charlton's yep. playing, they'll pick Charlton. Yep. Right? That, that's... <laughs> no, I don't believe... Any any proper football fan says, well, yeah, I'm, I'm an Ipswich fan, but actually I'd rather pay for Tottenham v Everton than watch Ipswich. I just don't believe that. If I'm wrong, tell me. But I just really, really don't believe that for a second. So I think... Now is the right time to get into an age where we actually accept this and embrace this. It's not going to affect participation in sport. It is not going to affect lower lower league attendances. It's time to it's 2020. You're still yep. telling me that I can't, and I'm <laughs> it's not like I don't go or I haven't earned the loyalty or whatever to be able to have the right to watch my team. Because listen, if the ground's open, I'll be there. I just I want this option to cover me, and I also want it to cover me for away games in the future as well, where I know that because of my circumstances, eventually I'm going to fall into a position where my loyalty points are not going to be high enough, and I'm not going to be able to get in as and when I want for away games, for example. So selfishly, yeah, I want that security. 
because I, I think as well, this, this whole the piracy thing, they're getting hotter and hotter on it. Eventually going to shut it down. My fear is that if they go down this route of denying the access to the broadcasters, and we do think the main responsibility here is on the clubs rather than the broadcasters, that they get shit hot on the piracy and just shut everything down by whatever means. And I've had this happen where you've seen them do it before with certain um, websites or apps or whatever. And it leaves me in a position where it's three o'clock on a Saturday and Tottenham are playing a home game a mile and a half from my home and I can't watch my fucking team. Mm. I can't accept that as acceptable as, as a match day paying fan. I can't accept it. So I'm very hopeful that they'll find a, a resolution. But I think the pressure's being put on the clubs and it's the clubs that don't want this. So I can only blame Tottenham Hotspur as well. <laughs> mm. It's very interesting that you think it is the clubs. I thought I would have thought it was the Premier League at a high level and their relationship with Sky that was the driving force behind the, a lot of the decisions around the football. I don't think it is. I think it's, it's mm. the club's fear that they're going to have to pay compensation again because obviously the TV agreement's there, right? Yeah, yeah. But these TV companies, are, what, what they want to do is, right now, is they want to give the broadcasters, the product that they paid for, the X amount of live games, the 20 extra games is to compensate them at the same price for the fact that the product that they're paying for is slightly different because guess what? Fans aren't in the fucking crowds. Mm. That's what the extra games is for. That's why, genuinely, to FPL related, that's part why we're ending up with game weeks 18 and 19, the way they're going to work out. Which I think to most people go, it doesn't make sense. And actually, no, it doesn't. But it's part to appease broadcasters. And if it, if we go through the season as it is, with the 220 games, with no fans in the ground, etc., the clubs ain't liable to be paying anything out money-wise. Now, I get they want to protect themselves with their assets, their loss of income, etc., with no fans in the ground. But my mass concern, to go back to what I said 10, 15 minutes ago, is the relationship between clubs and fans is getting worse and worse by the day where that relationship is, is just getting further and further apart. We, I think more and more people are going to, the longer this goes, the more and more people are going to be going, I'm not going to go back, you know? And obviously with the, with, even with the situation itself with COVID, there's probably already just that alone as people probably think I'm not going to put myself in that circumstance anymore. What suddenly we don't know, suddenly you don't, blink yeah. and in two years and you haven't got the same products anymore either. What, what we don't know is the impact that this has had on the television companies in terms of revenues and stuff. Because you'd think that if more games are on TV, more people need to sign up to a Sky subscription service. We played Burnley, at, um, and then we played uh, Norwich. And what had happened is, this is my, my mistake, West Ham had sent around a free BT Sport code or whatever, but you had to use it by a certain day, activate it. I didn't activate it. Got to the Burnley game. I was like, oh, um, it's on BT Sport. BT Sport wanted a one-month pass was 25 quid for access. Um, and I was thinking, that's steep. I don't really want it. But then I looked at it, I thought, look, the Norwich game's on BT as well. Divide the 25 quid by two, 12.50 a game. Rather than faff about and try and find the stream, whack my card details and paid it for the month and put it behind me and then cancelled it at the end of the month. And I got two games out of it. And then I watched actually a couple of other games as I'm well. I'm sure you did, yeah. So um, that was fine. But then BT Sport have just made 25 quid extra. How many other people in the same boat of me as me paid the television companies, the broadcasters money or upgraded their subscriptions during that period to be able to watch the games? We don't know that. And I reckon there's going to have been plenty. Like the TV companies, I don't, I, I don't think they've lost out that much financially. I mean, showing more games means you've got more advertising space to sell to potential advertisers as well. This myth that, oh, we're getting an inferior product yeah, but circumstances. It is an inferior product, but should, it, should, it is. Should they be compensated but, on it? No, I, I think the better idea is to say, look, whenever, it's not like there's whenever, an alternative. What, whenever, what's the alternative? No football. Well, when they renew, you give them something less, don't you? Yeah. You know, the next TV rights be slightly less or something, or the same yeah. or whatever. We know the TV rights are going to continue to boom. So I, I just said, look, please stay with us. We'll give you something back in return. That's what's happened here, for example, with the twenty games that I keep talking about. It's going to be interesting to see, James. And as you mentioned, all the supporters associations, supporters trusts and what have you are clubbing together to try and do this. And I'm with you. I actually think this, that when the season starts, we will have access to football. I honestly really do for season ticket holders or 
Um, I'm, ho- I'm hoping that the, the pressure that will be is. put on. As well as you say, like the TV companies haven't lost out on money, you're quite right. You've got a whole new wave of probably five, I would say 500,000 people or so who their general is, right, I'm going to games, etc. who potentially, or come September the 12th, are going to have to find a different ways and means to watch their team and are going to be attracted to this new idea of piracy. And yeah. then and then they go, well, this is all right. I now don't need my Sky subscription. I don't need my BT subscription. So trust me, it's in the broadcaster's interest as well to have these games shown. I, I genuinely think this is on the clubs. Yeah. And the clubs need to realise the bigger picture of their fans. and Because it's, well, it's all right for me and you to go, oh, I know where I'm looking for the piracy website. I, and I know my dad knows as well, so it's a bad example. But if it, the average person in his 60s who's gone to Aston Villa for 40 years and doesn't really use the internet or have an email address or whatever, probably hasn't got the foggiest clue right now of what to do. I agree with you on That's that. That's not right. No. Um, and you've got me thinking a little bit there, James, as we wrap up. We've talked about Planet FPL merchandise um, for quite a while. Launching September the 10th with next day delivery just in time for the season. Streaming boxes brought to you by Planet <laughs> FPL. Only £499 plus VAT. Can't guarantee they'll work, but, you know, it might be a little plastic box with a little sticker on it. and just With, with a signed picture. <laughs> Yeah, all you need to do is connect it to your TV, of, of not of us. Sky, and the games will be there. <laughs> not of us. Sign, sign picture of Manchild, not of us. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, guys, we're really interested in, as fans of what your take is on this. So jump on Twitter uh, when James tweets the pod at Planet FPL Pod. Uh, look down the stream and you'll be able to see um, the comments and what have you. Uh, I know what most people are going to think. They're going to want to watch and have access to the games. Um, so do do that. Um, yeah, be interested in, on your take, and yeah, I agree with I you, James. That it's something fair needs to, to be say done, yeah. the majority of the listeners are just going to go pirate. And to be fair, I would say the majority of the listeners already are. Interesting. Um, do not go on Twitter and just declare whether or not you're pirate or not. Or we don't want you know the police to crack down on Planet FPL listeners. Listen, a, if if your FPL, I don't, I don't want Planet FPL in the news for that if, reason. <laughs> If you're FPL pig, it doesn't really matter, does it? No. But they ain't going to find you, so. So, oh, you're banned from Twitter, mate. All right, cheers. I've still got my fucking code box or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thank you for tuning in to the People's Poll this Tuesday. Um, just a quick reminder, next week is Correspondence Week, so we won't have the regular schedule, but you will get four podcast every day one with each of our 20 correspondents to give you the lowdown on each and every team james and i are pre-recording as always because it's going to be impossible to obviously do 20 in a week and I, I, i'm not um giving too much away by saying these chats with these guys are so interesting um we try and keep these pods to half an hour they just bleed because there's so much to talk about and the guys are really knowledgeable about their teams so make sure wherever you're listening to the podcast Get your the, get the subscribe subscribe button or notification bell hit so that you know as soon as they all go live. And of course, we have our full schedule of Patreon exclusive podcasts as well. Um, loads more information on that on patreon.com forward slash planet FPL. Um, if you do subscribe now in the next four or five days before the 30th of August, you won't get charged for September as well because September is free for all our patrons. So if you're thinking about it and thinking, I'll just wait till 1st of September you may as well jump on and join the party now. There's well over 250 people in our Slack channel um, chatting about FPL, Sky FF, um, and just football and life and banter in general. Good place to be. So Loads go. of good competitions and stuff in terms of mini leagues, etc. as well. Yeah. Loads. There's lo- that, that Slack channel or oh, he, he's actually <laughs> some of the messages becoming hard to follow now because there's so there's many people many in there people. It's, be, it's become bigger than the original oh there's 30 people in what feels like a big whatsapp group no there's, there's 250 it's, minds it's going at it now it's good fun good stuff um but as always thank you for tuning in we appreciate all of your support stay safe shout for now thanks everyone stay safe cue music please man child <laughs>